You know, relatives, those of you who know me, my name is Dwayne Hollow Hornbear. I want to share I want to share a part of our history with you today. And this story was told to me long ago, but I've shared it a couple of times because just recently, because there's something about it that's I want to say it bothers me, but again, it has a lot to do with perhaps today the way we are and perhaps with what is, is going to be happening here in the very near future, the very near future of the Carlisle children coming home and where many of us are going to go to greet these children to escort them home. Many of you may know this story or another version of it, but I want to call it the reality of Whetstone along Minishoshe, today pronounced Missouri. You know, there was a time period when the whole western half of this, what is now the state of South Dakota, was the Great Sioux Reservation. The Great Sioux Reservation Day. They took away the Black Hills in 1877 because of what we did to Custer in 76. But this whole western half was the Great Sioux Reservation. All the Al Dialect speaking people. And we were free to be nomadic. Go and camp. If you didn't like your neighbor, you can always pick up your camp and go live somewhere else. Uh, but that's not what I'm getting to. What I want to talk to you about today is uh, during that time period, when in uh, 68, when that treaty was signed and the government promised monetary gifts, All the treaty provisions, the commodities, the rations, the mules, the oxen, the wagons, whatever they promised. But uh, they told our people, you guys are nomadic out here and it's going to be hard to find you when your village moves all over to track you down to give you your provisions. So we're going to set up this location over here at Whetstone. And there you will come to gather your rations, gather your treaty payment. But we're asking not to all come at once because you'll, you come, we won't have enough for everyone all at one time. So you decide amongst yourself, you leaders, which band is going to be there at one time and rotate. They're coming up from the St. Louis and St. Joseph, Missouri. And we'll constantly be getting them, but we won't have enough for everyone all at once. So rotate. So it was accepted. And this one particular band made their way to a mini they set up their camp, and the men folk were eager to get down to the river because they knew they could trade for new rifles, pistols, ammunition, saddles, whatever a man needed at the time. And of course, the women wanted the, the metal, the pots and pans, the bright colored, colored cloth so they could make clothing instead of tanning an elk hide or a deer hide all day long, instant cloth. So they were all excited about this. So this band set up camp. The leader went northward. He went to go visit some other relatives and perhaps had gone up far to see uh, Sitting Bull's people. So this camp uh, began to um, 
get their rations, the men. And as they went along, they bought the rifles, the ammunition, everything they needed. And of course, those stores, along with the stores, the trading post there, there were the saloons, the bars. And the men who worked the riverboats transporting these goods, they frequented those places. So when our Lakota men peeked in there, on what Kansus got up you know, back in our ancestors' days, Kansu is a Ka is short for Kanta, the plum. Su is a seed. It was the plum seed game. But today, when you ask someone, Kansu, then then they talk about a card game. Well, anyway, these men were were gambling. And so they um, they saw the Indians standing at the doorways or windows watching them. Come on in. You got your treaty money. You want to play? We'll teach you. So they showed the men how what they were doing, how it was played. So men started gambling, won some, lost some, winning, losing. And then at a point, they uh, put that bottle of rot gut whiskey in front of them. So here they were, playing cards, drinking that whiskey. And as time went on, they began to lose. They lost all their money. So they, how about my saddle? Are you taking my saddle? Sure. What about that new rifle you just bought? All the things that they just purchased, they started to gamble them away. Their horses, their wagons, even the commodities that they came after for their women and children who were back in camp, they gambled those away. Their teepees, drinking and gambling. You know, I shared this story with some councilmen back in the early 90s when that casino was built in, being built. You guys are welcoming alcohol back. I says, you know, I came back from Vietnam and alcoholic and a drug addict and I got a fight with that and best thing that happened to me was when you shut that liquor store in Mission. But that casino is going to bring alcohol. No, 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 no. It's in the resolution. No alcohol. New administration. Here's alcohol. It's still here. So, anyway, back to my story. As they began to lose more and more, the leader had come back from up north, seen but a few little teepees in the camp. Most of the horses were gone, the wagons were gone. As he came back into a, came back into the camp. Where are the where are the men? The elder lady said. They're down to the river. They're drinking and they're gambling. He goes down there and he tells all the men, get back to camp. And he goes along the river to these stores. Says, you know, our men were being foolish, stupid. They lost everything. If you can help us out, we have women and children that are hungry. We have women and children. If you can help us, when we come back for our next issue, I will make sure that we will pay you back. But those traders says, oh, hell no, you lost everything fair and square. Just get out of here. So he goes back to his people and he says, they won't help us. But we got to get going. If we can make it to the southern hills, we know our people will take care of us. But we got to go and we got to get going now. It's going to be a trip. So here's this band of Lakota coming from Manishoshe across the prairie. By this time, there were 
It's a time period, I believe, when the day schools were being built here and there. So there was non-Indians here and there. And of course, the, the cavalry was out here, the army. They were patrolling, making their rounds, checking on them, watching over them. They come across this band of Lakota coming across the field. The captain goes down and he talks to the chief. Chief, looks like you're in sad shape here. Yeah, yeah we are, but we're gonna make it. We know our people will help us if we, if we could just get there. And so, well, you know, chief, he says, uh, I've got some extra horses, mules, horses, some wagons, some army blankets, army tents, and some rations. But the chief says, I don't have anything to trade you. And the captain says, uh, don't be too hasty, chief. He says, you know, I've been out here three years, if not longer. And there's, there's something that we don't have. Then you sure have plenty of. And the chief says, what are you talking about? Look at all the young women in your band. You let me and my men go amongst you. Have the women we want. We'll give you everything you need. The chief says, that's the most disgraceful thing you can ask. He goes back to his people and he relates to them what the captain had said. People are heartbroken, sad. An elder lady steps forward and she said, Yesterday, two children and an elder died from starvation. We have nothing. As Lakota, as a Lakota person, we know that when we do something, we do it for the people. For the people. That's something the girls have to think about. There was silence into the evening, through the night. The next day, the decision was made for the people. The girls came forth for the people. They gave of themselves. And the army came, had their way with our women. They came and went and came and went until one day they stopped coming because by then every single girl was pregnant. They had no more use for us. And the chief says, we have enough now. We've got plenty of tents, horses, food, we have enough and we must get moving to our winter camp. But I'm not taking with me these girls who are, gonna, who are going to be having half-breed babies. There you stand. We must go prepare. And they left those girls out here on the prairie. They made it to the southern hills. Everyone knows that when word goes out, it spreads like wildfire. Leaders were coming in from all directions, angry. They were angry. Get some wagons and get some horses. Get out there and get those girls in. When all was settled and done, they called the Grand Council. And they put that leader in the middle. Every chief wanted to have something to say to this chief for the most disgraceful thing he did to his people. But again, grandma stood up and she said, this was very disgraceful, but the only ones of you that can say anything is those of you who have not touched a white man's liquor or gambled a white man's way. 
No one could say anything. We were all affected. And it's still happening today. When we are fighting about what we're going to do at this casino that gives us the white man's liquor and the white man's way of gambling, hurting our people. In a few days, we go back to Whetstone. that sent away our children because we were given an easier way of life, of not having to work. We can stay home. They'll bring us everything we need. They'll give us this. What happened to us? We'll go back to Whetstone. We'll bring those children home. The reality of Whetstone have taken away from us our culture. We're losing our language because of Whetstone. I will welcome back a relative at Whetstone, that hollow horn bear that is coming home. My heart is sad. I love my people. But the reality of Whetstone, brings my heart to sadness and the reality of what have we become. Those of you that hear me, I do not say these things to hurt someone's mind or your heart, your feelings. I did not do this intentionally. Nobody talks to us like this anymore. Nobody and shares these things. So I thank you if you hear my story. You know who I am. Thank you. Pilamayapalo.